Hi everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers, and today we're going to take a little bit of a tour of the greenhouse. First, I need to bring some stuff in from the house. Okay. Well, as you can see, I just brought out two trays of seedlings from the house. Now, these have spent the last couple of weeks in the dining room, great room area, and I'd reached a point where I just couldn't get them enough sun anymore. So, want to or not, I had to bring them out here. Uh, I'm put them in a, putting them in a section of the greenhouse that's a little shadier than some other sections, because. This is gonna be a little shock to the plants, but I think they're gonna be very happy. So I need to water them before I leave them here today. But these are uh, tomatoes, basil, okra, cucumbers, sunflowers, more cucumbers, and an assortment of lettuce. Now, the reason I moved, I did these inside rather than outside was because the last two times I started seeds out here, I just plain had trouble with them. And it's impossible to know whether it was the seeds, whether it was the environment. It was not the watering as far as I could tell because I was super, super careful. But something went wrong and I got lousy germination. Now, my germination in the great room, dining room, call it what you will, in the house has always been pretty darn good. I have grown my tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that for years there. So, it's a very easy to control environment. I was literally just using a card table. I did have a heat mat. The heat mat was not left on during the day after the first seedlings popped up but I was switching things around every day to make the plants bend in one direction and then the other and things like that. Probably should have moved these out a few days earlier, but I was hoping I could get a little bit more germination, but I noticed that a couple of the okras failed. It's not that they didn't grow, it's that they came up and then died. So something was not suiting them, so I'm like, okay, well we can just give up on that part. Uh, my husk cherries have not come up yet. It's not uncommon for husk cherries to take weeks to come up. So I'm trying eternally to be patient. I will have Henry Mark, I have it written down, as to what days these were actually planted. These were planted on different days. But I had to get these guys out here. They're a bit leggy. They should be able to recover. So let's take a tour of the greenhouse. Now, We've been, we're in a transition phase right now where we're moving things that no longer need to be in the greenhouse for frost protection outside. If by some chance the weather goes really crazy again, the things that I have outside so far are super easy to literally stick a lid on because they're all in buckets like the, ones, like the ones I'll show you over here. And literally, I have the lids for those. I could literally just pop the lids on. Even if we get frost, it's probably only gonna be 30 degrees. It's probably not gonna be 20. If it was going to be 20 for some reason beyond us all, um, and I should mention we're setting new temperature records right now, highs that is. If it was going to be super, super cold for some reason, Henry and I can carry the buckets together and put them back in here. But the goal is to get some of these things out here that simply don't necessarily love the heat as much as we're getting in here. We have created a safe area outside. It is not completely done. So the plants that we have put outside are plants that are less likely to be attractive to things like bunny rabbits and squirrels, uh, namely potatoes. Let's start the tour. I don't know if you can tell or not, it depends on how much you followed, there are a few things missing. The buckets that were on this table, which had potatoes in them, are now outside. This bucket has sweet potatoes in it. It has not been taken outside yet because I happen to know that critters love sweet potatoes. We had them eaten by bunnies somewhat last year. 
when a teenage bunny figured a clever way around some of our fencing. I did repair it, but still, <laughs> there was damage. Here's our shelling peas. Uh, these are Johnny's premium peas. I harvested one pod this morning and we tasted it. Probably could have harvested a couple of other ones. Yeah, there's a couple here that are ready to go. Probably pick them later today. These were just random leftover plants that we didn't have room for in the garden that came out of a 162 seed starting tray. And this morning we got to eat our first peas. I do want to get these out as fast as I can. Right now it's not an option because I haven't completely secured that area. Lettuce and cabbage. Let's see, we have a couple of different kinds of romaine. We have some salanova. For whatever reason, these salanovas just don't look that wonderful. They taste fine. They just kind of look kind of crummy. And I need to harvest at least one of those cabbage in the back. It's split. Swiss chard is doing great, but you can see this one is going to seed. I have to check. I may be low on Swiss chard seed, in which case I'll let that go to seed and I'll harvest the seed on it. This is Bright Lights, which I believe is a just standard old plant that will grow by itself and, and reproduce. Uh, the four plants in the back over here, let's see, are all cabbage. And they're doing fine. Um, they were started not that long ago. This is a, <laughs> this is a lettuce gone wrong. No, this is a lettuce that we wanted to see what it would look like when it went to seed because it's so bonky. It has the weirdest construct. It also has a couple of ladybugs on it, which is fine. But um, it's got these weird formations. And it was just so bizarre, we decided to let it go. And it's not going to hurt anything in here. It's taking up a corner of a bed, but that's OK. Uh, back here, we have some more romaine and some leaf lettuce. Same thing in here. Some of this is Salanova. Um, that's Salanova, these are two, and that's something random, I forget, Green Star or something like that. Very pleased with it this year, though. It's done really well. Um, this romaine looks funky donkey, but it's still perfectly fine. I just harvest from the bottom. We're using it as a cut and come again crop. Henry's radishes. Now, this is choice some in here, and it may be time to get rid of this. Um, it's not doing all that wonderfully. It's blooming, which is fine. It has nothing to do with anything. I'm thinking about harvesting some of the seeds off of it because I believe it is an heirloom. I don't think it's an F1. Uh, so I've just been kind of keeping this guy here. And I have another one. You can see the pods on it. Uh, I've got another one over on this side that I purposefully allowed to go to seed. And nice little pods. So uh, this is spinach. There was pak choy in there, but I harvested those out the other day. Um, the reason this is browned off is there was a issue with watering. It looked like it was wetter than it was, and yeah, that's not good for them. But they're coming back nicely now that they are properly watered. Uh, this is uh, kohlrabi. It's gone crazy. <laughs> and I really need to pick these guys because they're giant now. Well, they're not giant. They're still fine. But I don't want them to start getting too giant. These guys over here are also uh, kohlrabi. This is spinach and kohlrabi. This is pak choy, spinach. Let's see. Spinach back here, pak choy here, a lettuce. This is starting to bolt, but when I test, tasted it the other day, it was still fine, but I may need to get rid of that guy. Uh, these guys are, let's see, that's a random <laughs> kohlrabi. They must have come up late because there was kohlrabis all in here. Uh, these are pak choy, there's spinach back here, and more lettuce in the middle. Uh, cabbage, spinach, and uh, kohlrabi. So 
you can see kind of a plot here. Uh, just lots and lots of greeny, leafy thingies. Henry's radishes again. <laughs> Almost time to grab a couple out of there for him again. Over here we have some additional cabbage, two different varieties. Uh, these say they're Copenhagen, and they could be, but they, but they, they, they look more like tiara, but uh, they feel like Copenhagen. So these two are Copenhagen. Those two are three are also Copenhagen. This is one of our problem trials. <laughs> uh, it's a tray which was supposed to have like 36 fava beans in it and exactly three have come up. Now I have not used this particular source for seeds in probably 25 years so is it possible that it's the uh, there's another one starting to come up. Uh, my recollection from last year was it took forever for the fava beans to come up. So I've been very patient, which is not a virtue for me uh, <laughs> when it comes to seeds. On the other hand, I, was, I don't remember if I chose the new jade seeds or the old jade seeds, but only one out of four came up, and usually I get 100% on of those. Uh, the kohlrabis, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of 10, you know, the statistics of small numbers. It could be just the way it was. These were very carefully watered, but still did not get great germination. I'm going to keep watering these guys on the theory that they may still come up because right now we have three plants. I really want to at least taste these and see if we like them or not. Because if we don't like them, we're not growing them again next year. We have our 162 and again, we had germination problems here. We have a couple of pak choys, some Swiss chard, a couple of cabbages, kohlrabi, a couple of beets, and a couple of broccoli. But, oh, and then the, and what's weird is now, way after they should have started popping up, the onions are starting to pop up. So, okay, I'll take it. It's a onion right there. It's a candy onion. Uh, Trying to decide why this guy's over here and where he came from because he doesn't even really look like an onion. He looks more like a leek. But I suppose he could be an onion that seed that just bounced away. So I have like a total of four onion seeds up in here so far. One of which is supposed to be in the, which is sitting in the kale. And the kale never came up. So, uh, I don't know. This is a tough one. I may try some of these things again in the house on the theory that maybe it was just too much temperature swing out here. But I don't know, it's one of those things you just keep plugging along and hope for the best. This I'm pleased with. These are our tomatoes and pepper plants that I had previously, I started these guys in the great room house of the house. Uh, again, I started them there a while ago because I wanted to make sure that I would have really good control over watering and temperature and everything. Uh, transplanted them out here a week or so ago. It's on my list of th things Henry will be able to figure it out. And they are generally doing really well. The peppers, of course, are smaller than the tomatoes, <laughs> but they're picking up now, and it's time to give them a little bit of fertilizer pretty quick. These are pole beans, just planted this week. Uh, not up yet, don't expect them to be but I was not 100% certain where I was gonna plant them. So we decided we would do the same gutter trick as we did for our snow peas and also our shelling peas. This is a short gutter, it's just a cut off from a project. So this is full of rattlesnake beans, which are pole beans. We are gonna put them somewhere, just not sure exactly where yet, but Normally I wouldn't even try planting them outside until at least May 15th. So any advantage we get by having them germinate better in here is worth it. And these are an assortment of Asia, uh, Asian beans. We have red noodles and we have gitas, which both produce the really long, you know, like foot long, 18 inch long uh, beans that are used for stir fry. So that's the greenhouse for right now. We have not had a chance to set up the hydroponics yet. 
hoping to get to that this week. Shifting some of the plants out here is one of the things that we kind of wanted to do before we tried to get too much into the hydroponics because, well, it was kind of crowded down there. It's not as bad now, but try to work around things because we want to cover that table. There's a, a table that the hydroponics are on. Did not get a plastic cover before it was used last year and that's not a good plan. So we need to put cover that with plastic and then pull that stuff back together. Okay, outside. Now Jack is very excited, come on, about this outside yard thing. He got to spend a little bit of time in there yesterday. He's still not sure he likes it or not. The nice thing about it is in the afternoon it has good shade, but the not nice thing about it, <laughs> that is there because there's still a slight gap there. I don't want to keep the bunnies out. Jack, this way, sweetie. I don't have a, a latch on the fence right now, so I have a uh, makeshift gate. Come on, Jack, Jack, in. Come on, hurry, hurry. Oh, you're being a pain in the patootie. Come on, let's go. Jack, come on. Okay, so those straw bales that were along here that were used for insulating, that one fell apart, have now been set up here. We just tossed them there. We haven't straightened them up yet. But this is going to be a straw bale garden, uh, probably with tomatoes in it is my guess. Uh, these buckets over here are to potatoes. And they all have their little labels on them so that we can tell what they are. But I've watered them last night and they look pretty happy with life. The ones that were up are still up and looking green and happy. And yeah, no one's tried to eat them. So that was the whole point. We wanted to get them out. They didn't need that extra heat. Now, as you can see, the fence is up, but it is not complete. Um, that may not be obvious on the camera, but this is a regular field fence here. And up to about here, there is um, chicken wire. And that chicken wire is tied to the fence with wire. And then there's rocks on the bottom of it. That chicken wire is actually bent in an L shape at the bottom and buried under rocks. And that does not completely stop rabbits, but it slows them down significantly. And you can normally spot a day or two before they manage to make the break in. So that's what we do in our yard and uh, it works. So, we do not have regular water pumped to this area, but we decided that we would do this because we're going to be home this summer. Our regularly scheduled events around the United States have all been canceled due to the current pandemic. So um, this gives us a chance to do some crazy stuff. We've been actually talking about doing straw bale and some other stuff over here ever since we thought about doing it. But because we didn't have the time to hand water it, or dig in plumbing, we just let it go. All right, now I have to track down my silly dog who has wandered off. There he is, waiting due to flee at the gate. I need to get these guys watered and I'll be monitoring these guys pretty closely for the next couple of days as they adjust to more sun and there's a, bit, a little bit of a breeze in here when the fan runs which is good for the plants. Hope this inspires you guys to try some stuff. As I said, we've been planning to do that side yard here for pretty much since we decided to build the greenhouse. And it was just one of those things that got set aside because there was always something else. Well, as I said, since all of our summer events are non-existent, this is the year to get this kind of stuff done. So the last couple of days, we've been getting that fence up in stages and we got the gates on yesterday and I started armoring it yesterday. So I need to get some more chicken wire. I may have some more scraps, but I'm probably gonna need to buy some more. But the nice thing is you can make do with 24 inch tall chicken wire and it is usually enough to keep the rabbits out. A lot of it depends on how desperate things get. Hope this inspires you uh, to get some stuff done yourself. Plant some seeds, even if you can only plant them in a pot. So until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comment. We get brownie points, thumbs up, thumbs down, all the same to YouTube. So 
Until next time, take care. Bye. Let's see if I can see this. It is recording. That's good.